Hello, my name is Glenn Philbrick. This is McLean County, North Dakota, south of Turtle Lake. This is Hiddendale Farm. It's a century old farm in the Philbrick family since it was homesteaded in 1901. And I'm in my research garden, which is certified organic as of 2016. And here are quinoa plants. For those of you who don't know, quinoa is a gluten-free grain. Uh, it was the food of the Aztecs grown in Peru and Chile and made its way to North America some years ago. And so you can make flatbreads out of it, you can make cookies out of it. I've made cookies out of it myself. It can be a substitute for pasta. Uh, if, you have, if you have gluten intolerant, the flour can be made to make noodles. It's hard to make bread with it, but it will, flatbread will work. Cookies will raise if you use quinoa flour. This is seed stock from USDA, courtesy of Frank Kutka with the Farm Breeding Club uh, associated with NPSAS in North Dakota. And this has been a five-year project for me growing quinoa. Um, challenges with growing this is that it looks identical to lamb's quarters and can be mistaken for the weed until about a foot tall. This tastes just like spinach because it's in the spinach family. Normally quinoa should be this high. It can get a little higher. Challenges with growing it is if it starts out dry, you're probably going to lose the crop or the weeds will win. The quinoa, this quinoa was planted by hand, but if you want to plant it mechanically, you can take a John Deere 71 corn planter, switch out the bottoms so they have what they call the sugar beet bottoms, and drill your own seed plates, which you can buy, just to the size of the seed, and plant it in 30 inch rows. That's what I did. It did grow successfully. I either planted in late the last week of May or within the first 10 days of June. Uh, the one year I planted by June 10th, I did get a crop and it needs a good 90 days of growing, but we didn't combine till October, so it did, it did pan out. Uh, so you don't need an exorbitant amount of money to buy equipment to plant it. Those John Deere 71 drills are, are laying around. Uh, the seed plates and the beet bottoms are a little more expensive, but, but you can do this. And a, a simple row cultivator will work. Um, one that's made by Orby would probably be better for cultivating this, but the old corn cultivators they used years ago would suffice for this. If you have to cut it because the weeds are winning, the cattle will eat it and they do eat the stock. So there are benefits to, to using it for livestock as well. This can be combined uh, with a if your sieves are set pretty small, you can do this with an L2 gleaner. Cleaning is challenging. If there's some other weed seeds in it, you may need a color sorter, which is a specialized cleaner in, in some elevators, but it can get it clean. Um, and it needs to be pretty dry when you harvest this, otherwise it will plug the combine. Yields uh, can be from, from two, uh, 150 to 350 an acre. From, from studies I've been involved with in this state. A challenge you'll have with the crop is the saponin. This plant has no pests. They want to get it. The saponin coating is very bitter. Saponin is considered a pesticide according to the EPA, and it's on the seed. The seed needs to be scarified, otherwise you can't eat it. It's too bitter. Plant. So you can grow it in the northern Great Plains, but challenges that you will have is that if you're a conventional farmer and you're transitioning to organic, the curve is steep because weeds will be really competitive. This plant cannot have herbicide, any herbicide will kill it. So it's organic by default, even if you're not certified organic.